Hi, my name is Fong Chu, and I'm here at the Potter's Council at, uh, at Amico. And um, the uh, theme for the workshop here is uh, splendid surfaces. So what I'm going to try to um, try to do here is just show you uh, maybe just a little bit of textural surfaces on some pots that I'm making for this weekend. And what I do is I use a series of these wire, uh, these I guess I call them kinky wires, or you know, um, wires that are kind of bent this way and the slight difference that I, that, about these wires is that you can get them you know in um, a pen a spring or any spring you pull it up and you stretch it and you, and you attach a handle to it um, the slight difference here that I do is I flatten these things so that when you flatten them it's a lot easier to, to, to texturize the work so what I'm just going to do is just throw a very very simple cylinder and generally when, I, when I'm doing these, these pieces I leave the uh, walls just slightly thicker so that I can really accentuate the, uh, the patterns. I'll clean up the base so that I can get right to it. And generally what I do is, uh, just to make it easy for me, since this is such a symmetrical form, I just mark it on four sides. I'll just move it and then and I'll just create this little herringbone design and then I'll go opposite sides. And what this does is it keeps the, obviously it keeps the area, you know, keeps the the, the uh, pattern, the surface itself a little more symmetrical and it gives me a slight edge. I'll try to explain once I get all four sides done. So now I have four sides here, and then I have another four corners just to, um, you know, to wire. And you can do it when it's soft, or you can do it when it's slightly what I call uh, skinned over, where the surface is just, just about uh, the first layer of, of the clay is dried, and then, or at least firm and then I can texture it and it makes it a lot easier so that way I won't distort the form but uh, I don't think it really matters it's up to you know it's all up to the personal um, the person who's doing it and I don't do a lot of the cleanups till much later as you can see the surface now also speaking on the subject of splendid surfaces um, the uh, type of glazes that I use uh, it's a little bit uh, radical. It's a little bit unorthodox. What I do is I take a low fire glaze generally and I over melt, over fire and it creates an over melt. And so when it creates an over melt, if I, you know, I have to make provisions for that. So what I do is I, I actually create a moat at the bottom here of, of this pot. So, and to create a moat, what I do is I use one of these, um, these modeling tools from, I guess, you know, and it has a tip here. And what's fun about these tools is that It's just a simple modeling tool, you know, any of these, but with a point. And the, it's flat on one side and domed on the other side. So what it, what it is is I'm using this side to dig and then the other side to polish. So I, I get my moat, you know, almost an instantaneous moat right away. So what I do is I just uh, throw the wheel down and then just dig it out. And once it's dug, there's the moat. It's like it's a bit of a trough here. And what the moat will do is it'll catch that, that extra glaze uh, that's, that's going to melt from the top there and then down here. Um, this is basically paper slip. Oh, this is just a white smooth stone or slip that I, you can get anyone. And they just throw a bunch of paper pulp in there. I don't know how, what, the, what the percentage is. You just roll. I use toilet paper, so you just kind of roll a few of these a couple times, put it in there, stir it up, and you're good to go. That's it. I've tried using porcelain slip itself. For some reason, the porcelain slip itself just doesn't stick. So the, uh, the, the smooth white stoneware, I've used it for years. Again, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is to now demonstrate how a lot of these pieces here that you're seeing now are finished. And all I'm using is just a diffuser from a fluorescent, uh, you know, an old fluorescent uh, fixture, I guess. So what I do is I roll this 
I'll just roll a simple coil, slightly tapered, like that. Um, that. This is basically the first one, and I'll just show you, you know, how some of these these pieces are evolved. And so, um, this is the original idea, and all I did was I took same thing, and I rolled it onto the diffuser, and you can actually see the texture. So, and that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really, um, you know, it's not the same, but at least it echoes the thing. It's somewhat, you know, it, it mirrors it a little bit. So that way, you have texture, texture, and all I do is while it's plastic, I curl it. And then I let it sit, let it stiffen up for a while, and this is the same piece that's been stiffened up now, and you can see that clay, with clay's memory, it, it's opened up. And that's important, because if I had stuck there sometimes, uh, you know, the thing would shift and, and, and I'll break the, the, uh, the lid. How the spouts are made is just by using these little uh, skewers. That's how I make these spouts, all right? The handle spouts, and, you, and so from here, all I do is roll a coil of clay, and then put the stick in there, And you can do it either way, you can stretch it now. I'm stretching it this way and then I turn it and stretch the other opening. And then you can just roll it into and you get this texture. That's all, you know. Uh, so, so now I have a hollow form and I just, because clay is still in this plastic state, I can gently bend it and just, just stretch it. And then what I do is, you know, I like to cut a little, uh, little notch, you know, a little end up to my spout. So all I do is I'm just going to cut it from this way. You can cut it this way, you'll see the difference, and it won't be um, as attractive. So all I do, I'm going backwards and then curl up, and now there's my spout. So now um, I make these feet, and I'm just going to show you how the feet are made. Pretty quick. So all I do is I, I roll a coil and I taper on one side like that and then I taper the other side. So I have two points here versus if I had just rolled a coil and then made my feet it would be pretty fat and pretty kind of not so nice to look at. So all I do is I take this taper here, tap it on this texture form again like that and I have a nice, you know, texture and then I pick it up gently and fold it and I have my feet so the feet and all the other elements are all sort of you know sometimes I'll leave them plain so it all, it all depends on my well my mood I guess and then from there I'll cut it and slice it off Again, I just don't make four. Sometimes they do break. But I always make extras. And usually I do this first and so that I can now mark my feet. One, two, three, four. You know. And then just use some slip because this piece is still pretty uh, soft, rather hard. Um, And then, believe it or not, just that's it, and I can just assemble it. And again, I do all the cleaning up later on. The extra slip, um, I just use a little sponge stick and I just clean it off. And there it is, finished teapot. So, 